Okay, so today we are going to visit Computer History Museum and it's uh, Mountain View, California, United States. To be honest, I had uh, many, many chances to and opportunities to visit it earlier. Why I didn't do that before? I have no idea, but I'm really, really curious about it. IT Forge, stay with us, like us, subscribe and put some information in comments. Where do you think uh, we could uh, go next time? See you. See you. Bye. Okay, so when you get inside, you see quite a huge hall with large windows and you can see what's going on outside. And there are two big uh, columns with uh, people who made the difference and uh, invested some like donation to Computer History Museum. Uh, usually, uh, if you go to the left, you'll get to some extra additional exhibitions and to the right, you get to the main revolution Computer History Museum exhibition. So this is Cloud Bistro and this is a food area technically for computer history museum in uh, Mountain View. They also have this wonderful kind of like one of the first generations of Waymo, self driving car. And uh, let's see what's inside of this car. Technically it's quite minimalistic and you don't see too much gadgets or let's say widgets. So it's only two seats, area for bags. That's it. So self driving car, what do you expect? And uh, here is a small uh, area with souvenirs as well and several rows roads to start your journey. Okay, fun fact, <laughs> actually this time I almost missed again the main hall for Computer Science History Museum, so that's the Revolution exhibition and uh, technically <laughs> my previous visits to a Computer History Museum I missed this main exhibition. So as you can see it has different areas historically arranged. We are going to uh, check what's uh, happening there. So the very first section is about very initial tools to help improve uh, math calculations slash computation. So this is actually the first example of mass produced calculators. So what you could see on the screen, these are the very first calculators which were produced long time ago, like a couple centuries ago. This example of again tools, quite old ones, which help to do simple math from like Russian shorty to Japanese equivalent. Okay, moving forward, we are go to the section number two. This is the history about how these punch cards were developed and uh, how they were keeping storing information about like how many cards you need for a simple program. So now we are moving to section number three and number four about computer science and birth of the modern computer. Okay, we are moving to birth of the computer section number four. And uh, this is all about like how the modern looking like computer as a device was born definitely you see uh, different examples from 60s 70s they are quite different compared to today and uh, the thing is that place you could find so many examples so many different historical records of how the pure science era was born and uh, this is very important because this is all about how these all huge uh, like like cases or shelves which previously were called computer were transformed into personal computers today. Here we also could see first examples how computers were actually acting as devices for a better, faster computation, like for Mercedes-Benz, anti-log system was developed because of support from those time computers. Uh, they could uh, faster and more relatively uh, calculate the data. And even like first pacemakers were also developed this time. Here is a very wonderful example of a very old disk-based uh, storage. So now we're moving to the section number eight, to uh, memory. 
and by memory I mean RAM, so random access memory, which is a short-term memory for any computer today and even many years ago. And section number nine, from hardware to software. So this is a brief overview how a software program is eventually translated into clear commands for the CPU, Central Processing Unit. And this is some missing piece, Hollerith Synthesis Machine. We are now in section number 11. And uh, by mini computers, you could imagine 60 plus years ago, totally different stuff compared to today's uh, mini computers uh, with IBM System 32. That was mini computer. So in this section, we could check a lot of different examples of uh, computers which became smaller and smaller. The section number two empowers the mini computers with the idea how they actually did this digital magic. For instance, you see Simon 1 under the hood, how all the computation were done for all these microelectronics those days. the overview of devices uh, from specific industries. For instance, this is Wang 2200. Computer device was for the banking industry. It was accompanied by Prime 3000 server as well. And uh, this is about how technically computers think. Before we move to the section number 13 about AI and robotics, we actually meet the first robotics example. Believe it or not, this is fully operated back to 90 1960s from Stanford Research Institute fully operated example of robotics credible but true pinky promise the very last step before moving to next section imagine in 1965 Gordon Moore had predicted all the further future architecture of microprocessors and computer processing units. Now we are moving to section number 13. It's about AI and robotics. And now it's very connected to IoT Forge, right? To the topic of IoT in general. So this is a very cool overview of robotics, different shapes, different visions, how they should look like from droids to droids to drones. It's very important because it all about the vision of people back to like 70 something years ago, how they foresee the robotics industry and develop. But some examples are very, very real. For instance, this is Aiba, a very well-known Japanese robot dog. It exists it works and you can buy it and it has couple generation it's very popular it's one of the icon of japanese robotics this guy the model 2000 it was also the vision of working support robot in uh industrial like spaces to help people arrange the stuff uh self-driving robotics and of course how ai could power robotics it's all about artificial intelligence making robotics fully autonomous. So moving forward, we could see some video film slash movie about evolution of robotics AI in popular culture and real examples of servers which were developed and manufactured to process huge enormous data for those times regarding robotics uh, processing of their sensors. We are moving to the section number 14. It's all about computer graphics, audio, sound, music, and how actually the computer could influence on the art itself. Definitely, it found a huge area for drawing 3D pictures and images. And you could see this is a very popular Pixar animation movies about Monsters Incorporated. And these computers were the first ones which were used for uh, delivering computer graphics in 3D. But this Pixar image computer, it's from 1968. 
unbelievable. We move to the section number 15 about input and output. So what is input and output in computer world? So input, this is all about devices, tools, sources to put, to give the data to the computer, to do some processing stuff and get the output. So this is outcome of the process. So that's why we call it input and output. We are moving to the section number 16. Playing on computer, the huge piece of game industry on the computer. Name this game as Arcanet, which is absolutely wrong. I don't know why my mind tricked me with the very legendary game of Pong. But this one is a total mind blowing stuff. This is a real hardware working display of evolution of entertainment systems, family entertainment, systems, from like well known today's Xbox, PlayStations, back to Sega, Genesis, Mega Drive, Nintendo entertainment systems, Super Nintendo. Atari game systems and many stuff. I don't even know the names, but this is so cool. It's incredible. This is a real icon of the world of the computer games. And this is guy from the Hala. You you could notice him. So this is incredible and absolutely insane. And you could also even try these games, all games on Atari arcade machines. This is absolute mind-blowing experience. Just to stress out, this is a very important area of the exhibition, especially about computer graphics, music, sounds. These are actual computer music pioneers, Max Matthews and uh, John Choning. Okay, and we are moving to the section number 17 personal computers, so from mainframes, supercomputers, microcomputers to personal computers, which could be affordable and uh, placed in every household and family. Here we see uh, the uh, success of Microsoft company who introduced Windows and many different products and this is the Hall of Fame for software including Microsoft, Apple, HP and other stuff and also the video history of Microsoft getting to its success which we are going to review in section number 18. It's not about smartphones. I mean like it's not exactly about smartphones. It's about making its portable, making its pocket size device, the computer. So this is about how in personal computers back to the days started to go through into smaller damage. This is a very cool area, one of my favorite. It's about how Google became Google with their search engine back to 1999. So incredible, you could read the history of their first search request, how it was implemented, and this is real wreck. Uh, we move to the section 19. It's about networking and the web. So you have all the hardware. Now we need to teach it how to communicate with another hardware. So this is all about the history of communication from phones, telegraphs, back to early 20th century stuff to modern devices. And this is very iconic uh, stand where you could see comparison side by side of a legendary battle of uh, computers between Apple and uh, IBM or let's say Apple and PC and uh, on the left side you see Apple II uh, the second version of home computer and on the right definitely IBM PC. This is very cool and fun piece of history. Uh, back to the days uh, when Microsoft Windows get localized in the borders of post-Soviet Union countries it was hard to uh, get to the licensed real version of any software or intellectual property. It was so-called intellectual property pirates and uh, that t-shirt shows that this is properly localized version of 
Microsoft Windows. These are just some extra details about uh, stuff uh, which we found in uh, the sections number 17 and 80 about personal and mobile computers. So this is about evolution from bigger devices to small devices and definitely about how computers from huge story occupying uh, machines. This is some extra stuff about section number 19, networking and the web. So these very famous those days uh, software for uh, browsing the internet, such as Netscape, Navigator, Mosaic, and other sources of information those days. And uh, this is just brief overview how telecommunication was done back to early 20th centuries. A very brief <laughs> audio from gift store. The computer history museum. It's very cool. So we can also like some small stuff for kids, good stuff for uh, decoration in your room, stickers, notes, uh, the puzzles to complete uh, history of programming languages, different literature, technology, related, uh, technology related. Okay, so final thoughts on uh, visiting computer history museum. It's very cool. So first of all, I missed the very important, the main exhibition hall, and that's definitely an issue. <laughs> I would think like it's quite a small one. So don't make my mistakes. They have big one revolution exhibition hall with all the history of software, hardware, electronics development, mass development, so yeah. Again, really great experience, nice piece of history, how computers affected from like machines for computations and calculations to actually develop an internet and the technology landscape we have today. So visit it with your families, kids and friends. It's a great experience. Thank you IoT Forge. Definitely subscribe, like us, and uh, hit the bell. Stay tuned, we are doing this for you. Bye.